Hey everybody, it's me, Undead Viking. I'm here with another uh, video review for you. Uh, the game that I'm reviewing today is called Galactic Arena. This would be what the box would look like if I had a box. But I don't have a box for the game. But I do have a really cool prototype that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Uh, Galactic Arena is a team-based... Well, technically you can play it one guy versus one guy if you want to, or one guy versus one gal, or one gal versus one gal. Uh, but way I've played it, I've played it with my buddies, and we've played with, like, even number of teams. And we've actually tried playing Deathmatch with the little... I don't think you're supposed to play Deathmatch, but we've been monkeying around with that a little bit. But, um, uh, what it is, ostensibly, is you have these crazy, uh, different characters that you can play. Um, you know, uh, different aliens, and, uh, other, like creepy looking guys and the idea is is that everybody uh shows up at this uh, arena a galactic arena and uh you are fighting uh like basically a blood sport type of thing you know not you know uh a a theme which we've revisited many a time in these videos and i'm sure you've revisited in uh film and and uh tv shows and books and novelizations and what have you so uh it, it's 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 a tried and true fantasy sci-fi theme ever since you ever watched that very first ever uh the, the star trek with uh Kirk fighting the Gorm or whatever, uh, you know, it's just you're pitting these combatants against each other, and whoever is able to uh, take out the other one wins. And so you can play, um, and we, the way we've been playing it, you can play with teams. You can have two versus two or three versus three, and uh, you you have these cool uh, dudes that, and and there's some women as well uh, that you get to uh, play. And they have all these these awesome little powers and some different weapons and some different abilities, and you move around in this arena. Uh, and uh, you there's like traps in the arena, and there's um, like like little uh, treasure chests and stuff like that. And so you move around and you use tactical and strategic combat, and with the luck of the random die rolls as well, and uh, you just go to war. And it it, it on its face it, it looks like a game that you've probably played before, or at least you've thought of or you've heard of. But um, the, the, a lot of things stood out for me as I played this game, and I'll go into more in the conclusion, but the thing that I stood out is like each of these ten different people that, 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 that you can play, they all are like, you know, radically different. From, they, 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 they fight differently, they have different powers, they have different abilities. And, uh, and and you don't get to use all the abilities. There's tons of games out there that like have, oh, and, and here's your dude, and here's everything that they can do. And uh, and it, it kind of detracts a little bit because you have all these different options and you can you know play this and use that and you can you can chain this and, and it feeds into this and it's all kind of laid out for you. But in this game, you have a limited amount of like special ability points is what they're called and you have to actually design your character with, with what you have in front of you. And uh, I really, I, I like that aspect. I like the fact that like, and then as a team, you can get with your buddies, you can say, okay, well, this guy's gonna be our rage combat guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'll work, that'll work, you know. And, and so you can kind of work, work on that. And like, ostensibly, they have this screen that you set up in the middle of the board, and then like everybody kind of like hovers over and you got your sheet behind you and you, you pick what you want. And then you lift the screen up and then you reveal what everybody's got. And, um, and so, like, everybody's going to have, like, a screen that covers up what you have. And then, then you get to see that matchup and see whether or not things work out. And so, um, I, I, I like that. I, 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 like, I like building my team, you know, building my superhero team, if you will. But this is more of a building my uh, alien mutant uh, uh, space knight team, if you will. But um, the, the game works really simply i mean basically uh melee combat if you're next to somebody you can attack if they're further away you, uh, you minus uh your chance to hit with range and i one thing i really like about it too is that you actually get to roll a defense die i've been playing too many games where it's just like uh i think um designers have kind of moved away and just said that like uh you know just let's just let's just have the opponent have just a defense um, of like six or whatever, or whatever your defense is, and if we beat that, great, we do damage. Let's move on. And I, I always, as when I'm defending, I always, I always want to, 
I want to have a chance, you know, of like, even if you roll a 10, because you use a 10-sided die in this game, even if you roll a 10, I want to have a chance to like, you know, get a miraculous roll or something like that and, and beat you. So, um, well, let me, I, I've kind of gone more into my conclusion that I really wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, that just means the conclusion will be a little shorter, but let me show you how you play the game of Galactic Arena, and then we'll come back and I will finish uh, my conclusion. All right, cool. Um, Galactic Arena, what do I do with my sheet of paper? Um, well, you, you saw the picture, Galactic Arena. All right, as you well can see, this is the game board for uh, Galactic Arena. And uh, these uh, spots here in the middle are where, um, Te technically, like, one person starts here, one person starts here. But if you're playing a uh, two-on-two, -two, then, like, you fill up one side, fill up the other. If you play three-on-three, -three, you fill up on either side. And like I said, we've we've monkeyed around with, like, have, playing, like, a deathmatch game where, like, you know, one only one last person standing. And we still uh, started everybody around there. But that got a little uh, gruesome, so <laughs> we actually we started moving people out a little bit just because um, it seemed like if you didn't go right away, uh, you'd get beat up pretty quickly. But regardless, it was, it was fun to try out. But I, this game is supposed to be, like, one person versus what one other person, or uh, teams, if you will. So, uh, when you start the game, uh, what will happen is uh, you'll, you'll roll a die, and uh, you will try to determine, and then whoever, like, rolls the highest will get to pick uh, a hero out of these, like, these big templates they have. And I do apologize for the for the light shining off these, but these were laminated, so they, they would get to me from overseas uh, in relatively uh, safe fashion. And they did. But um, the artwork on these are, is awesome. I mean, like, you can see that. Uh, obviously, this is a prototype, so some of them, unfortunately, don't have artwork. But, you know, obviously, uh, they will all eventually um, have super super awesome pictures uh, for for them. And, you know, of course they have the, the you know, ubiquitous, uh, uh, strange looking uh, uh, names uh, from the future, like Zelsler, you know, and which always makes me wonder, it's like, so what, what happens, you know, 4,000, 5,000 years in the future um, when everybody's name has to have a bunch of weird consonants and whatever, names that we never experience now, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But then, you know, of course, it tells a little bit what they are. They're a predator, a sentinel, a dragonkin. That's just, you know, flavor, but whatever. But you will notice that there are some stats here. Um, this is the defensive ability of this particular character. Uh, that is its starting health. That is the offensive capability. Um, this is their initiative. Uh, higher the better, because whoever has the highest initiative will go first, and then so forth. If you tie, you just roll a die to see who goes. Uh, this five special abilities, that's how many five, uh, special ability points you get to pick at the beginning of the game. You'll notice your special abilities are down here, and then there's a cost of those for those special abilities. You can see, so like this one costs one, so if you have five, then you have four left. Uh, red ones are offensive, uh, blue ones are defensive. You know, pretty straightforward. Uh, some of them, like uh, like this, like you'll say like once per battle, your attack roll is 10, you roll a d10 for battle. Um, you know, so that's only one time. You use it once and it's done. Uh, and you can see that that costs two, uh, and it costs an action point to do it. Your action point tracker is this right here. You start with five and move down. Um, after everybody hits zero, that combat turn is done, and then you go on to the next uh, uh, round. Uh, and then there's the weapons you can pick. You know, like and the like. It, you know, the, it'll give certain abilities like fire, and so like you can see the fire after successful attack roll deal plus one damage if your attack roll was greater than seven. Um, you know, bone spear and you know, poison penetrate things like that. And so then you know, of course weapon keywords. You don't get all of your weapons. You have to pick one at the beginning of the match. Um, but if you uh, if you go back to your starting spot, you can trade out your weapons at that time if you so desire. And then down here is your health track, and you just mark that. And you just use tokens um, uh, here. You can see, like you know, here's a here's a health token uh, that you use, and you just you know put that on there, move it down. And uh, here is um, your like weapon token, and then you'll place that. You know, on which weapon you've chosen. Um, the special abilities can only be used uh, once during a combat round. So, you, like, after you use it, you flip it over to show that you've used it. Uh, the same thing goes for if you've chosen an ability that can only be used once per battle. You flip it over when it's done. 
Uh, you'll notice that some of these over here, they're just passive. They don't expect, they don't use an action point uh, to do to use them. They just uh, get to do it. And you know, so but you still only you know there's there's still limitations as far as how many times you can use them and so forth as well. Um, but so there you go. I mean that's that's pretty straightforward. And like you know, you just pass these around, and whoever uh, gets the highest roll uh, will get to pick. Uh, which one uh, they want to use and, and use for this battle, if you will. So for this example, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a Zelsler, and the, it's just this little token with his name on it there, Zelsler, and we're going to put him uh, in that starting spot. And uh, for the their opponent, uh, let's go ahead, and I like this guy, just because I think he looks cool. We're going to take Killian Moore, who is a security guard, a Star Trooper, and a Death Knight. I want that resume. So what What do you do? Well, I'm a security guard. Nice. I'm also a Star Trooper. Interesting. And uh, I'm also, uh, did a few years as a Death Knight as well. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So and we'll go ahead and put uh, Killian Moore over here. So theoretically, my opponent is sitting over there, and I'm sitting over here, and we're getting ready. So at the beginning of the game, like I said in the, in the introduction, you're going to have that, that, uh, that, barrier between the, the shield and you're going to pick which abilities and which weapon you want to start with beginning of the game and so after you've done that uh you will then reveal those and then you would compare and so like you can see uh killian moore has an initiative seven and zelsler has a initiative six and it should be mentioned that uh when you uh, so killian moore will go first but um, when you go as a team, just because, like, say you have a member of your team that has a really high initiative, and so they go first, and like, uh, let me see, there's one guy here, like this guy here, um, Kelp Zess has initiative of eight. So if he's on your team, he would go before you, but when you, when your teammate activates, that does not mean you get to do anything. Uh, so you have to actually wait your turn so to speak and so on your turn um what you will do is you you know determine you know like you start with like your move you can take your movement um and you can also you know decide if you want to pass your turn you can but you, nobody ever passes their turn unless there's something going on um you can like if you notice you probably may have noticed that these these spots over here these are the crates um that are on the board when you step on one of those and you open it um on the back side like just i'll just grab this one it actually gives you like a thing it's like oh you have plus one permanent uh plus one action point uh you know that, that you can have um when you so you have extra extra uh you can do more actions because once you run out of action points uh then your turn's done. You can't really do anything. And you use action points to defend as well. And so that's actually like a pretty important uh, uh, ability, you know, because like um, you use, otherwise if like you get attacked with zero action points, you just get your base defense, which you know, like in the case of Zelsler, you can see it's just a three there. So that, that kind of stinks. But um, so you can run over and grab crates, but usually you, you start attacking. And, and I should mention also these little black dots, those are the traps. And when you run into a trap, uh, what will happen is, is that you, you end your movement on there uh, you can't move anywhere. Even if you had more movement, you stop on a trap, and uh, you roll a d10, and then on an odd, you you'll lose a health. So you just like here I have my little dice box here. So you run on a trap. I rolled a four, and so then you know it wouldn't affect you. So there you go. But um, so you move, and then uh, then you can if you want you can activate any kind of offensive special abilities you have. Um, like so basically what happens is uh, everybody else on the board that isn't on your team is considered a defender and so like if there was multiple players but in this case there isn't so if Killian Moore went first and you looked at his look uh, his actions after he moved and he said okay well we're gonna increase I'm gonna increase my range attack by two I'm gonna use concentrate fire this turn so you just say that's what I'm doing and you know and he has uh, like you know, his uh, grenade launcher, 
And so I'm increasing my range combat by two. And so, you know, and like maybe he moved first and he has a move of three. And so he wanted to head over like we went one, two, three, like so. And so he's gonna shoot at you, but he wants to get close to that crate so he can open it up and see what's in it. And so after he says, well, that's, that's my, I'm gonna use that special ability. Then at that point, um, you can then, uh, and I remember that one was one of those passive abilities. He doesn't have to uh, uh, like turn, use an action point to do it. The person running Zelsler, which you know technically would be me, you know I could look and if I had taken um, uh, any kind of uh, uh, sorry, if he if I had taken like any of the the defensive abilities, these these any of those blue ones, uh, I could do that as well. So um, maybe I could you know I could maybe uh, uh, well, I didn't really pick these, but so. Uh, so like maybe uh, if you, you do tail grasp and it's like at the start of your opponent's turn uh, they cannot move if on melee range well no I'm not really close enough yet um, you know so maybe after like I can do disarm so I'll activate that because you know I you know after a successful attack your opponent cannot use his weapon keyword so like I say okay I'm gonna do I'm gonna activate my disarm attack so maybe now he knows I'm gonna run over and attack him and so then the attacker can then if you they want they can activate up their their keywords. Remember they can only use the keywords of their of their weapon once uh, during this combat turn. So he is he's going to say, well, my grenade launcher is going to use its crushing ability. And a crushing, if it's successful attack, it moves your opponent's two hexagons instead of one. Because every single time you hit somebody, you actually get to move them. And so. Then after that is done, he says, I'm going to attack you, Zelsler. You knew that was coming anyway. And then they roll the die. And then so when you roll the die, uh, for a ranged, for a melee attack, you just roll the die. You add your uh, combat, and the other person gets to defend. It With ranged, you have to count the spaces between you and the opponent. So like, you know, here we have one, two. So there's two spaces, so I have to reduce my ranged combat by two. But remember, I activated that ability that increased it by two, so that's kind of a wash. We look at Zelsler's um, attack ability, and it's a four. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to roll a d10, see what we get here. And I got an eight. That's a pretty good roll. So, you know, he's got a 12. So now Zelsler gets to go, and he has a defense of three, and so he has to get a 12 or higher. So I got to roll a nine or a 10. So let's see if I, let's see if I get lucky. I rolled a 10. That's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, the def my defense roll succeeds. Um, you know, I block the grenade launcher or whatever, and uh, it doesn't do any damage to me. Now, if they he had hit me, uh, what, what you would do then is you would just see what damage. It would be one damage. I'd lower my health by one, and then we would, in the special effects, if any, would have. So he'd get to move me to, and like maybe he'd move me like back to this way, and into another into a trap, and so then maybe do more damage. Now, um, you know, so but that didn't happen. And also, if he had succeeded in attack, he would get to move one himself. So maybe move closer to that uh, that 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 crate. And the reason for that is like so, if you're in melee, um, you do that, and then you move. Um, and then you can move with them. And so they can't, like, you know, you're not moving somebody away from you, so they can't do it. So we rolled the die, we defended, so we didn't uh, do anything other. If you haven't already moved, like McKillian already did, you could then move it at this time. Um, you Because you can attack, then move if you so desire. And then you're done, and so uh, the next player in line will become the attacker. And so that would be Zelsler. And then he decides, okay, I'm going to go. Oh, and remember, it does take an action point to attack, and it does take an action point to defend. And so both of those would be a, adjust their attack. So Zelsler is going to attack. But one of the interesting things is, is you can actually, if you're more than one space away, you can charge attack to add one to your attack roll. And also add one to your damage. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna do that. And but then it takes two action points to do that. So we reduce if we you know we reduce our action points we're at four, we're gonna go down to two to do that, and so we're gonna charge him. And what we have is we have um, the bone spear, is what I, I chose, and it's got the penetrate ability. And penetrate as successful attack, deal plus one damage, your attack roll is greater than eight, your opponent loses an action point. So if we hit them, we can actually reduce the, how many action points they have. And so, once again, I say that's what I'm doing. 
the opponent gets to decide if they're going to activate any of their defense abilities. Remember, we got this tail grasp. So if we can do that, then we can disarm it, and then he won't be able to use any special abilities on his weapon. So then, once again, we just we have attack roll. We have attack value of four. Um, remember, when we're charging, so we we add one to it, and so we're going to so we have a five plus the roll. Let's see if we can get an eight or higher. And I rolled a nine. An amazing roll. Great roll. And so we got a nine. And I should mention, if you roll a ten for your attack, it's considered a critical hit and does an extra point of damage. But so nine uh, plus the five, so it's fourteen. Uh, Killian's probably not going to be able to do anything. Well, he's got a four defense, so he can, if he gets lucky and roll a ten, uh, he could pull off pull off the win here, but let's see what we do. No, I rolled a one. And interesting enough, if you roll a one, it's just considered a roll of one and it automatically fails. Um, so even if you, the other person like had an attack of like total of five and like Killian's defense is four, you roll a one plus four is five, you think, oh, I'm safe. No, a one automatically fails and the defense doesn't work. So now we get to do our damage. So not only do we deal one point of damage from the bone spear melee, but since we did the penetrate, you, uh, plus one damage if your attack roll is greater than eight, it was, and he loses an action point. And so that's how they, so you, he'd reduce his health from six to four, and reduce his action points by an extra one, because remember, he would have been at four from his attack, he defended, move it down to three, and then another one down to two. It should be noted that you can't ever choose not to defend. If you have an action point, you have to use it. Um, so like, you, you after the die roll, like, you couldn't with killing and say, well, I'm going to get hit anyway, so I'm just not going to defend against the attack. That's not an option. You do have to use an action point if you have one. Um, so that, that, that's an important rule that uh, we actually made a mistake with the very first time we played. So because he succeeded in attacking, we can then move him. So we could maybe move him, like, move him towards this trap. Don't move him close to the crate. Move him towards that trap, and, we'll just, we, we, and then we won't take our move. Or maybe we will. We'll move closer to the crate, like so, for whatever reason. And because he stepped on the trap, and then we get to roll a die, and then if the die roll uh, is odd, he's going to lose another point. And it's a nine, so things aren't looking really great for Killian War. He he just lost three hit points. And he's going to have to rally and uh, pull something off to uh, to pull off the win. But there you go. I mean, that's that's how it is. You you continue on until nobody has any action points left, and then you regroup and you start over. And then, and then you, you, you start over, and then like everybody's action points goes up to max, and then you start up another combat round, and you go back and forth, back and forth, until one of these two is dead, and the other one wins. And like, and if it's a team thing, if whoever, after like the team that hacked, you know, actually wipes out the other team, that's the team that wins. But there you go. Uh, that's, that's a really quick overview of just how to play on Galactic Arena. I should mention there's a couple other things. Like that's kind of like there's one wrinkle that you can add to the game. And I, after we played it a couple times the normal way, we did add this wrinkle. Um, you get these little overlays that you can place on the board. Um, you can place them anywhere. Um, you can't place them except for these these this center area. Like, you can just set up, like, there's barriers that just basically will block people so they can't get around it. Um, there's these stasis fields that if you step on them, you, you uh, basically lose a turn. It paralyzes you. And then there's these explosive traps that if you step on them, they automatically explode and they do a point of damage. And what happens is there's there's literally six of them. So if you play with six people, basically uh, starting with the first player and going around, you, you get to take one and place it on the board. You can place them over another a tile, but you can place them over the traps and what have you, and you can place them around. The number on them is you can make an attack on the thing, like whether it's the an explosive trap, a stasis field, or a barrier, and if your attack roll is higher than that number, you will destroy it. But of course, then it takes an action point to attack it. And so they, they aren't like permanently on there. Uh, but you know, this is just another cool little thing you can add to the game um, to kind of mess with uh, the train and mess with uh, your tactics and your strategy. And uh, after we played, like I said, I played a couple times, we always added that because it added a fun little wrinkle uh, to the game. So. But uh, there you go. Uh, that is how to play Galactic Arena, but let me tell you exactly what I think of the game, and I'll do that right now. There. There. So there it is. That's, that's the... And, and that might not be the game box when it comes out, but that's the picture they sent me. So, cool. Well, anyway. So, that's the screen. I used that as well. But anyway, um, so... 
there you go. Uh, that's how you play. Like I said, it isn't really all that difficult. Uh, you know, move your people into a space where they are able to be uh, effective. And um, initiative really comes in uh, to play a lot uh, in this game. Um, you know, obviously, uh, being able to go first when you're uh, the the offense or the like, especially melee offense, you you need to be able to get up there and hit and 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 swing away and things like that. And um, you know, and so and also just being able to do your actions uh, quick and and what have you, uh, and and being first up is is always really helpful in any kind of game with combat. However, the people that you know have the lower uh, initiative, I mean, it isn't like they're 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 boned either. I mean, they have enough powers and abilities and what have you um, that uh, they you know, are able to survive and able to do really well, which kind of feeds into where I'm going here in the in the statement that I'm going to say that um, I'm always impressed, and I've said this in many other reviews, I'm always impressed when somebody has made a game and they have all these variable player powers, have all these, like, uh, crazy critters that they've made up, and they are able to balance it. They're able to uh, make it so, you know, there isn't like a broken one. You know, there isn't one that's like, oh, geez, this guy's just too powerful, you know. And, and I'm always, I'm always impressed by that. And, and, and they've done that really, really well with this. And, and it's just, you know, and occasionally you'll play and like somebody will, you know, uh, uh, put, um, like, uh, by the luck of the draw or whatever, pick the right uh, abilities that, that seem to like match up better. Yeah, and they get a little bit of an edge. But then I think what that is is more of a challenge to me, if I'm kind of behind the eight ball a little bit, is well, how can I how can I defeat this puzzle? How can I how can I uh, take it to this guy? And 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 I really like how um, you can actually start uh, using the the. the the, the traps and 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 the, the you know the, the the crates and whatever and also if you know, like and I mentioned like uh, towards the end of the explanation like you you can place these barriers down and like the explosions and the stasis fields and what have you I really like how um you can start using the terrain yeah and it's not it's not a, a completely uh, new idea but you know, start using the terrain to your advantage and and the fact that is that if you can get a successful attack on somebody and if you can knock them into that uh, in, into those fields or whatever you know then you know it's like you're able to like start you know using that to your advantage and and, and I like I like being able to like affect other people in like you know in, in like more than just me hitting them with my axe I, I mean I do like that that aspect of being able to actually move them after I hit them and and so there's I mean there's like there's all those different facets of the game that I, I, I really uh, took a shine to and I really started enjoying it and um, you know and, and my friends and I um, we love playing deep deep strategy games. Um, we love playing uh, buckets of dice, uh, thematic co-ops, thematic, uh, you know, uh, space things, thematic fantasy games, things like that. But sometimes there's just something to be said for taking a half hour, 45 minutes or so, um, to four guys sitting at a table and, and they're you know, them beating the snot out of each other <laughs> for a while and and just seeing who comes out uh the victor uh, after all is said and done and and that this game kind of fits that niche for us and fits that mold and it, it, it's it's a heck of a fun game and we've had uh, a blast playing it and i and i really hope uh this game gets published because i really want to see what the end result is going to look like i mean this game is completely playable as is it's 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 fantastic it's a ton of fun but if the artwork that they have on these sheets that that they sent me is anything uh like what the final game is going to look like and, and the amount of time and effort they're going to put forth I, I i'm i'm prepared to be dazzled and i'm pretty sure they're going to uh make not only a really fun game to play but a really fun game to look at so there you go uh that was galactic arena if you have any questions about the game please post those i'll try to answer those to the best of my ability um and other than that, thank you, as always, uh, for taking the time to watch this video. I greatly appreciate your time. And as always, you have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye now.